Welcome to this episode of Sunny Silver Linings. Sunny's guest is Sunet Singh Tuli, co-CEO of ISP Solar. Sunet has over 30 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur, with three IPOs in his career. At his various ventures, patented technologies were created to develop scanning, printing, and imaging products that set world records in both price and performance. His current businesses are in the telecom field, health tech, and renewable energy. And now, your host, the founder and CEO of IT by Design, Mr. Sunny Kayla. So, Sunitulliji, thank you so much for joining me today. I am super excited about having career conversation and entrepreneurial conversations today. Uh, we normally focus on career conversations, but you have so much experience, hands-on experience as an as a serial entrepreneur. And I'm super excited about having our conversation today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a privilege. Yeah, so uh, I want to share with the viewers a little bit about you, uh, Sunit, that um, you have added so much value to our community. You have mentored so many professionals and young entrepreneurs. And I have seen that uh, firsthand uh, when you contributed to the, the to the Sixth Chamber uh, with our mentoring program uh, for entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, startups, and professionals, and I see you uh, globally contributing to 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 the society. And uh, when 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 we look at your entrepreneurial journey, uh, you always have focused on very very innovative, the new way of uh, of uh, adding value. Uh, with your products and very innovative products. For example, having a cash tablet out there, uh, it gave that access to computing to, to those countries, those societies where they were not able to afford like iPad and expensive products. And you, you and no, uh, introduced that product and that was a big deal when UNO uh, was so impressed with how you were innovating these products to add value to those people where they are underprivileged and they did not have access to computing. So I'm super excited about, you know, just sharing your uh, entrepreneurial journey and learning from you and sharing that with the viewers today. So thank you so much once again for joining me. Thank you so much. You're too kind. <clears throat> so Sunit, I'm going to start with my uh, number one question. And that way, that is, you know, what have you done as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as a leader that you recommend others should consider? One of the big things I, I, when, I when I talk to young entrepreneurs and, and those getting a career going in the IT side is not only to think about outside the box when, when you think of your career and you think of technology, think outside the box geographically also. It's a huge world, and there's a big divide between the haves and the have-nots. Think of the opportunities that exist out there, the need uh, that exists out there uh, from a global perspective. Uh, the way that trade functions today, uh, there's no reason for us to be limited to our neighborhoods or our countries or our continents. We can be impacting uh, everywhere uh, in the world if we want to. Uh, and, and and think of needs that, that can be addressed globally. I, I think that that would be my first biggest advice. Uh, many times entrepreneurs looking for that next big idea, uh, I, I find, uh, and I find it shocking, uh, think, um, think too small. Think big and think global uh, is important because the technologies that we may take for granted and, and is common uh, may not be accessible to two thirds of the world. And that's where I believe the real opportunities lie. Yeah, that's so powerful. Uh, you know, think big, uh, think global and take big risks. And I want to, I want to go back to your origin story for Akash tablet, uh, because that was, that perfectly aligns with what you just said. It impacted people globally. It was a big idea. It was very innovative way of doing things. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about how you came up with that idea and how that, you know, what you did there hands on and that's like proven value in this big idea that you have, that, that you have shared, think big, think global. And I want to 
uh, talk about a little bit of your experience there. So by the time we started the venture, we had uh, been lucky enough to have taken two companies public in the NASDAQ market, had already spent about a dozen years developing technologies and, and bringing them to market. Um, and uh, the, the thinking at that stage uh, in my life and career had sort of changed. And, and I wanted to be focused on technologies that impacted um, uh, poverty, uh, you know, ha had a way of uh, alleviating poverty. And uh, I, I'd come to the conclusion, or me and my brother, who, who collectively started this venture, uh, had decided that uh, a, a, a key means of doing that is education. And the best way to reach those that can't get quality education is if we can deliver internet access to them. Governments around the world have difficulties in building the infrastructure and in, in training enough good quality teachers. There's still places around the world, uh, you know, in the hinterland of Afghanistan and elsewhere, where the girls and families are afraid to send their daughters to school. So in that environment, we felt that maybe the internet could have some impact. What we discovered was that there was a cost barrier. There was a, a barrier that uh, just kept these people uh, as part of the digital divide because they couldn't afford the technologies that existed out there. So we started pitching uh, NGOs and governments and others and started looking at how to create products that could not only deliver the internet at a much affordable cost, but provide hardware devices that, that would be affordable to people that have, let's say $150, $200 in monthly income or less. And um, we had the opportunity to pitch this to the Indian government. And at that time, uh, the government uh, that was there got excited by this idea and, and decided to take it to the next stage. And from that effort, the idea came about where we created, uh, this was now, you know, it's been a little over 10 or 12 years ago, we created these very low cost tablet computers uh, that retailed uh, at, at about $35. Today, $35 seems inexpensive. 12 years ago, $35 was very inexpensive and provided you with unlimited uh, mobile internet access within that price point. Um, and again, you know, the, the, the intent was uh, how do we reach that customer, uh, which, uh, which is literally billions of people around the world that can't afford the internet uh, and we decided that uh, by focusing on, on what should be their biggest need, uh, getting education for the children and creating affordable products, that, 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 that this made a lot of sense in that, in that direction. And, and that's how it took off. Thank you. And, and not only that you have done great as a serial entrepreneur, uh, taking three companies uh, you know, public, uh, two at NASDAQ, NASDAQ and one at the Toronto uh, Stock Exchange, so three IPOs, and you also kept the social responsibility in mind as an entrepreneur. And when we look at making a difference in the society, and one, one thing that I see there with, with all your products and ideas is that you made a bigger impact because uh, innovation was there, a new way of uh, overall looking at things at the global level was there. Uh, and when you when you when you look at that uh, experience and the journey, uh, you do see some uh, like commonality in terms of um, you know why uh, when it comes to your awards, for example. Uh, so the innovation awards, uh, entrepreneurial awards, leadership awards, uh, you have won so many awards, and you you were kind of uh, published in many world-class publications as well as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as an innovator. So that goes back to the same, uh, that business philosophy that uh, make, that make, make a difference, make a bigger impact, think big, think global. And one another thing that comes out of this is uh, focusing on the right product at the right time. So my next question is, what are the top trending technologies that you see, uh, especially in the new norm that we are, you know, we are going through, 
and uh, every business is uh, preparing for now, especially 2021. So what are the top trending technologies uh, where professionals and entrepreneurs should focus on? So I, I'm a big believer that uh, the same way we've seen the telecom revolution eliminate the concept of um, long distance, uh, that we are approaching an era where renewable energy will be uh, such that it'll not only be abundant, uh, it'll be free. Uh, you know, we, we've seen a hundred years of global conflict and uh, uh, over oil and, uh, you know, significant issues related to uh, the value and the cost of sources of energy. I, I think that that's about to change. Today, the, 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 the least expensive source of energy uh, is uh, easily uh, solar renewable. And uh, that will continue uh, dropping in costs. And we see on the horizon further significant cost drops uh, and then significant new battery related technologies that will be coming in. So uh, that uh, I, I think will become so abundant and so inexpensive that we will no longer be charged by how much we consume. We may be charged a small monthly delivery fee, but the measured consumption, the same way that we don't really have that any longer in telecom, will, will also be very similar. And then if you believe that that's what's gonna happen, you, you're gonna have abundant free energy, uh, you have to start looking at the impact in other areas from that. Uh, I don't think that there's much life left on the internal combustion engine. I, I, I truly believe that electrical cars uh, will be there a lot faster than most of us think. Uh, and uh, I, I think that autonomous vehicles will also be a lot faster than what we think. But uh, a lot of key technologies will be driven by the idea that energy is abundant. We're doing this video call because the cost of bandwidth is now almost irrelevant. We can have a huge amount of bandwidth at the tip of our fingers and not worry about how many megabytes or gigabytes we really consumed. Um, that was not the case uh, you know, very few years ago. And I think that the same thing is gonna happen with energy. If you have infinite amount of energy or what seems to us like infinite amount of energy and it's almost free, it'll change the global economy, it'll change how we function. And I, you know, despite the pandemic and despite the huge debt that most governments have taken on and so on, I, I see a massive global boom over the next 10, 20 years, uh, unlike we, we saw after World War II. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, and I completely agree because my, personally, travel, you know, going down means my carbon footprint going down. And with Zooming, uh, with a with lot of those yeah. uh, business objectives that I was able to uh, meet those business objectives, you know, using this Zoom as a transportation uh, method, I was able to probably reduce my uh, carbon foot, footprint. And having, you know, Tesla type of success stories. And I used to think because, you know, uh, I bought this Tesla that was a couple of years ago. That's why I see more Teslas. But now I see that numbers like overall market share has been going up. And it's a huge oh, yeah. success story and completely agree with that. Huge. And, and you know, similar to what we saw with the iPhone and, and, the, and the smartphone revolution, it was soon followed by much lower cost solutions uh, that had such a huge impact. So I see very inexpensive, electrical, rechargeable, stylish cars uh, that would be really cool. Um, you know, as you can imagine, you know, those of us that are in the field of technology uh, generally experiment with things that are not really out there. Uh, I bought a car last year that um, I bought it just for the sole reason that it was the first commercially available vehicle with uh, solar panels integrated into the roof. And even though it's a very small company that only makes about a thousand cars a year, I, I, I wanted to have that experience and that experimentation 
with uh, you know where this technology is going, and and I see significant advances uh, in this whole area moving forward. Yeah, and leading by example, right? <laughs> well, the, yeah, experimenting by example. So, so some of these examples uh, uh, work out great. And sometimes when, when you are in the early cusp of uh, adopting technology, you start to learn and accept the quirks that, that go with it until it matures. Yes, and thank you. Thank you for that. And Sunit, I know you have done a lot of hiring in North America to India with your factories there. Uh, and what is the one thing that you look for when it comes to attributes of a successful professional? Uh, what is that one thing uh, that you look for in, when you're hiring? To me, it's about passion. It, you know, are they passionate about their career? Uh, you know, a red flag always for me is when somebody asks what their work hours are. Um, if you're passionate about it, then, then that's, not a, that's not a relevant question. We don't measure your hours. We don't measure when you start and when you stop. We allow, we, it, for, for most of our staff, flexibility of working from the office or at home, working late or working early. You know, there's an expectation of performance, but, but we don't measure, uh, you know, the hours necessarily spent. And you can only do that if people are passionate because I discovered they spend a lot of hours when they're passionate about it. Uh, you know, often in interviews, I, I ask them what trade publications do they subscribe to? Uh, you know, what new or interesting technology have they read about in their field? Uh, that would be cool. And, and, and it's not just in, in the IT side of it, not just information technology. Um, you know, we, we developed, uh, we started putting some of our capital into real estate development a few years ago. And when I hire senior staff in that area, I, I ask them about what's new uh, as far as changing technologies in that field. And if people are not passionate, they won't have good answers about that. If they're passionate about what they do, then they'll tell you, even if it's construction, uh, that you know uh, they'd love to see more of, I don't know, insulated concrete forms or other kinds of uh, up and coming technologies. And, and that shows you that this is something that they want to build as a career, that they want to be the world experts in this field. If that's not the case, then they won't perform. And, and uh, th then it's a job for them. It's not enjoyment. We enjoy what we do. We get up early, we get in uh, because we get excited. Uh, you know, even when it's minus 10 outside and, and dark as hell, uh, it, it's still, uh, the passion that drives you um, and you want everybody in your team uh, to be passionate in that regards. Um, and, and that's, uh, you know, uh, it, you, you can judge it. You, you can judge it by when, when you meet people, uh, you know, are they, are they excited uh, about what they do every day? Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> I think it was one of those uh, SCC gala uh, that you were there. And one of the things that uh, the conversation uh, that we had as leaders, uh, uh, you know, the, the panel discussion we had, it was uh, vocation versus uh, vocation. So when you are passionate about what you do, uh, hunger comes out of that passion to learn and grow and do well. And it's more like, you know, you're always, uh, it's a vocation, right? <laughs> because you just enjoy it so much. It's like a vocation for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, and you, you mentioned the, one of the SCC galas. Um, uh, I remember the very first one I attended uh, and I met with uh, Manmeet Puller uh, and became close friends with him. Yeah. And and, you know, until I met him, I, I didn't understand the concept of why somebody would want to be a politician. <laughs> um, I, I just couldn't understand uh, why that was something that people found exciting. Um, and, you know, here was somebody who was really passionate about it. Right? You yeah. know, he, he, he really wanted to be impacting people's lives in a positive way. And you know, as you know, the sad story of... of uh, the accident, how he passed away was, you know, driving, he saw this truck that had uh, gone off the road on an ice storm 
and he stepped out to help. And the accident that resulted uh, after he was helping this person is what he passed away. And, but, but, you know, he, he died doing exactly what he loved doing, you know, and somebody stranded on the side of the road and, and felt that his obligation to, to make, you know, help that person out. So, um, uh, irrespective of what your field is, um, uh, if you're passionate about it, then, then, um, it is it is what you do, irrespective of your work or not. And 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 one thing that I see, Sunit, um, when I mentor a lot of young entrepreneurs or professionals, a common question is, uh, like you know, I uh, I you know I need to discover my passion. A lot of even like you know my son who just started going to college is like you know. So we have those uh, discovery questions and you kind of help him discover his, his kind of his calling, right? So passion, do you have anything to share with our viewers, especially where they are struggling to really have that clarity? What are they passionate about? How do you do that? So partly what I, what I do and I've done with, with my kids, uh, I've got now two that are in university is, um, since since we've been sort of privileged enough that they don't need to have a summer job to play for for tuition, uh, I get them to be involved with local charities uh, during that time off and uh, and hope that in that process they start discovering uh, what needs to be done. Uh, one of the kids spent the summer dealing with and, and feeding homeless people in downtown Toronto. Uh, you know, another one spent some time at a, at a, at a local food bank. Um, and, and, you know, it, it does, doesn't have to be that, that, that there's any number of areas. And, and, and the reason was that ultimately uh, how they use technology, how they develop businesses, um, I want them to be thinking of uh, the neediest of the needy that, that exist out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it was intended to try to help starting develop those passions. Um, and uh, it comes from exposure. You know, it's not necessarily that, that that's what they'll end up ultimately doing, but it is to expose them to as many different things as, as, as possible. And uh, just by working with different charities over uh, their Christmas or their summer breaks, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, that that would become become part of it. Um, uh, in my case, uh, you know, since I spent the early part of my life in India, uh, then moved to Iran and then to Canada, uh, you know, having seen the difference in those environments, uh, I, I think I had a better understanding uh, than most people uh, that haven't seen uh, that poverty that, that you know, there are people out there that are not as privileged as us, and and uh, if we can deal with the create technologies that can impact them, uh, then then that's you know it's, it became easy to get passionate about that. Now, thank you for sharing that because I know a lot of uh, young professionals, especially they struggle with that question, and I think the one way to really uh, kind of uh, go through that discovery process. Self uh, discovery is is uh, kind of getting out there and not being afraid of uh, you know getting into uh, different uh, areas and experience uh, those different areas. Especially with you know when when you are uh, involved in the go givers activities, that's the best way to really because you, that you're not working for money in there. You're working just because you want yeah. to. Right, so that that's a great suggestion, and thank you for that. Now, uh, what are you reading uh, that other professionals should read, uh, Sunit? I know you read a lot, and what are you reading nowadays that you would recommend to our viewers? So, you know, as I start my fifties, um, I decided to pick up uh, a book I'd enjoyed that I originally read probably about thirty years ago or thirty-five years ago. And uh, that was Sam Walton's autobiography uh, called Made in America. Uh, you know, Sam Walton, as you know, is the founder of Walmart and, and the wealth he created um, uh, 
Um, but when, when you look at uh, uh, all his uh, children and his wife and, and so on, it, it is significantly one of the largest fortunes in the world, if not the largest fortune in the world. Uh, but what was interesting was that he founded Walmart when he was 45 years old. And uh, that experience and that focus, especially around affordability, was something that inspired me uh, long ago. And recently I decided, you know, uh, as I go to the next stage of my life and, and you know, it's, you start thinking differently or you, you start to, when you turn 50. Uh, I, and, and I remembered that he had started his um, uh, his business, uh, the first Walmart was, was founded in, in the late 40s, when he was in his late 40s. Um, I, I wanted to see how uh, how I'd feel about the same thing uh, if I reread it 35 years later. And I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, it, it is, and I'd recommend it to, to everybody uh, just because uh, of the impact the, that that business has had and, and you know how it's dominated it, its field. Um, you know, for technology entrepreneurs, um, you know, uh, uh, Clayton Christensen's Innovator's Dilemma uh, or, you know, Crossing the Chasm. And, you know, there's a series of books that, that, that I recommend. Uh, but uh, these days, um, Sam Walton's Made in America is, is, uh, is sort of my reread. So thank you for that, uh, Sunit. Um, and with this, uh, I'm going to go back to the, your original, I mean, your, uh, in the beginning, uh, you shared, uh, you know, like a think big, think global. And when we look at uh, uh, Walmart story, uh, they started with that uh, BHAG, right? The Jim Collin uh, concept of BHAG. When they started with that one store, uh, they had the overall big vision that they want to, Kind of, they didn't know at that time they're going to be globally now right next to where even uh, Chandigarh office in India, you can go to Walmart, right? But I'm I'm sure in the beginning stage, they probably did not know that okay they're going to go everywhere, but BHAG think big, think global. It perfectly aligns with that uh, Walmart success story as well. Oh yeah, um, it, it it was it's. Amazing when, when you start to realize how large this entity is. I, I think I read somewhere recently that that they, uh, for example, are something like six um, percent or five percent of all product imports into the U.S. I mean, when you think about how large that would be, I and mean, it's it's massive. Yeah. Um, they're they're a very large entity, and they've dominated in an era where you know most retailers have failed uh you know as as companies like amazon have succeeded uh, and the internet has come to dominate uh and and walmart's now trying to put together its own uh, online strategy and so on but you know what's interesting is that uh, retails continue to strive in the formula that they've created um and so it, his personal experience is, is very interesting yeah, and uh, so, so Sunit, uh, uh, you have had uh, you have had a great journey, and experienced uh, you know at a global level, lived in different places, uh, and and you are you're always uh, that entrepreneur which is uh, innovation focused, uh, global focused, big issues, uh, you know, big uh, think thinking big, and I want to ask you that one question, which is. What is the greatest lesson you have ever learned that you want to share with our young professionals? You know, it's learning on how to deal with failures. It's learning how to deal with when things don't go your way. And yeah, as we learned as engineers when we did experiments in school, um, when those experiments don't work out, we would generally not consider them you know, it's, it's a failure if you left that experiment and didn't proceed further. If, if it didn't work out, you decided not to do anything with it. I, I think learning and accepting that it is not a failure, but an iteration to success 
Uh, and success doesn't happen until you go through multiples of iteration and evolution and modifications and so on. And you have to think of it from that perspective. Um, and I, I, I think that the learning to accept setbacks and figuring out how best to uh, learn from them and improve on what you do, how you function and, and, and grow, uh, I think is critical. Um, and if you're willing to accept that, you're willing to take bigger risks, uh, think larger, look at larger opportunities, uh, you're less afraid of that potential failure, knowing that, that you know, it's as much a potential uh, as the success would be. Uh, and until you take that risk, you can't get to the next level. So, so I think ha having that and understanding uh, that uh, just uh, became critical to, to that growth over time. Um, business development and sales is a big portion of what I do in my business. And, uh, you know, not everybody accepts uh, your pitch. Uh, you know, more often than not, you get rejected. Uh, but uh, accepting that and continuing to refine your pitch and moving that forward is, is, is critical. And it's not just with your pitch, it's how you operate your business and how you grow your business. So learning how to deal with setbacks uh, and learning and accepting them as, as a standard part of the iterative function towards success, I think, I, I think is, would, would be my, my best lesson. Yeah, no, th those are great lessons to share with our viewers. Now, uh, thinking of uh, uh, experimenting this solar panel-based vehicle that you are uh, experiencing right now, can you share your experience? What's, what's your experience so far? How is that experiment going? It, it, it's a fun vehicle. Uh, it's, it's a sexy car and uh, it turns heads uh, as did the original Teslas. You know, now the, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the way, it, it was like the original iPhone, you know, when, when, when people had it, it turned heads and when too many people had it, it was common technology. Uh, so, so it's, it's at that stage, uh, it, it produces not sufficient energy for my daily use, but it produces some energy and, and helps reduce the carbon footprint. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the big challenges of, uh, photovoltaic technology is that it requires a very large footprint and those footprints at this stage don't exist on cars. Um. Uh, you know, as the microprocessor has become tiny compared to what it was 50 years ago, at some time in the future, it is very reasonable to expect that uh, panels on top of a car, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 years from now or whenever, uh, could create enough energy to power that car. So, so the idea that that could be happening in our lifetimes is in, is in itself exciting, uh, even if um, it doesn't fully yet deliver on that concept, uh, it still has a positive impact. Uh, it's a fun car. Thank you, Sadeep. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. A uh, lot of, lot of very valuable insights. Uh, and, you know, that comes from that uh, very, very unique, special journey, the life journey uh, with, with that balance. And yeah, so thank you for sharing a lot of very, very valuable insights with our viewers. And we appreciate you coming me. to uh, this podcast. And uh, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this episode of Sunny Silver Linings. Please be sure to like and subscribe so you do not miss any future episodes. If you are interested in exploring our career with IT by Design, please visit our website at www.itbd.net or www.itbd.in. We'll see you in the next episode.